Finally, in this lecture, we are going to turn our new generic Windows server into the budget storage server. Of course, you can't expect any fancy features that the enterprise storage arrays offers like deduplication or compression, although partial functionality is available with the Windows server as well. But for our purpose, to have a network storage array for our virtualized ESXi servers, it is enough. We have talked about remote management capabilities once our servers are part of the domain, so now we will utilize that. First, we are going to add all our new servers to server management application so we can easily access all of them. To do that, simply select Add other servers to manage option here. In the wizard, just search for the servers you would like to add and then add them by clicking on the arrow button. As you can see, we have added both our servers, domain controller and the storage server. Once done, you can see that we have more roles that are available in our server management because they are installed on another managed servers so we can easily access them from a single dashboard. Now we can add some additional roles or features to turn the iSCSI server into storage array. Again, it will be role-based or feature-based installation, not remote desktop services, so let's keep the default option here. As you can see, now we have a possibility to choose on which server from the group we would like to install the role or feature, so let's select our iSCSI server and continue. In the next step, we can finally select desired role. Let's expand file and storage services and then file and iSCSI services. If you scroll down a little bit, you will find our new role, iSCSI target server. So let's select this and approve the additional features that are needed. We don't need to select any additional features in this step, so let's just move on with the wizard. Now, all we need to do is to confirm our selection and begin the installation itself. It will take a few seconds to finish the installation, so let's wait a little bit here. Once the role is installed, we can expand file and storage services from the left menu in our server management application and select iSCSI option. As you can see right now, we don't have any iSCSI virtual disks, so we need to create a new one first. To do that, simply click on the tasks and select new iSCSI virtual disk and the new wizard will appear. You can see that we have one available iSCSI target server, iSCSI with online status. If we have more servers with the iSCSI target server row installed, we will have an option to select the specific one, but in our case we have just one. You can see that the server has two volumes, drive C and drive E. Since drive C is quite small and is used for our operating system, we are going to select our drive E, which is 400 GB virtual disk connected to the fast VMware para-virtualized SCSA controller. In the next step, we need to provide a name for a new virtual disk. Don't confuse that with a virtual disk on ESXi level. From Windows Server version 2012 and further, you are basically creating Windows virtual disk on the top of your selected drive that is used as an iSCSI storage. You can see the location where the disk will be saved. In our case, it's drive E, the default folder iSCSI virtual disks and then the name of the disk as you name it here. Now we can decide the size of the virtual disk. This size will be seen from our virtualized ESXi servers. So if we select 375 gigabytes here, our ESXi server will see 375 gigabyte device available over network. We could use even more up to 400 gigabytes but let's keep some space free if we decide to create another disk as well later on. Generally, it's not a good idea to use thin provisioning on the storage array as well on the VMware vSphere layer, 
So that's why we don't select dynamically expanding, but we will stick to the fixed size disk. In the next step, we need to pair our virtual disk with iSCSI target server. We don't have any existing targets because it is a new installation. So let's select a new iSCSI target. This is the identification on the Windows side. Imagine a situation that you have multiple virtual disks connected to multiple environments. Probably you won't mount all disks under one iSCSI target, but you will use different targets here. Let's say that you have two lab environments. First one contains three VMware vSphere ESXi servers and another environment is for our Hyper-V servers. You would like to present to those servers only their corresponding storage, so they see only what they belongs to them and this is why you use multiple iSCSI targets. In access servers, you need to specify which servers will be able to see this storage device. In iSCSI world, we use IQN as identification of remote device, so let's click Add. At this stage, we don't know IQNs of our new ESXi servers because we have not installed them yet. But still, we need to provide at least one access server before we can continue in the Vizar. IQN is just a string and can contain whatever you want. So let's just fill in a dummy as our fake IQN iSCSI initiator identification. You can also use CHAP and reverse CHAP authentication. What that means is that not only remote server who is trying to access our storage must present its correct IQN, but also some username and password. Generally, in bigger environments, you will see advanced authentication, but for our lab environment, it's not necessary to configure that. So let's continue with the Vizar. Finally, in the summary page, you can see all settings that are going to be applied to our server. Where the virtual disk will be stored, how large it is, what is the name of our iSCSI target and what server have access to that storage. Once you have configured those settings, you can proceed with creating of the new iSCSI target and virtual disk. It will take a few minutes to complete the setup and once it's done, you can see our new virtual disk in the upper part of the screen and your iSCSI target in the bottom. As you can see, our iSCSI target is in not connected status, which means no remote servers have an active connection to that target. That will change once we will install our new virtual ESXi servers and point them to this iSCSI target. Also, at this stage, our virtual disk is in initialization state and it will take several minutes before the disk will be online and ready for use. As you have seen, the iSCSI configuration of Windows Server is quite straightforward process. Now, the server is up and ready for our virtual ESXi servers. In a few upcoming lectures, we will focus on them. We will create a new virtual machines that will be used as our nested ESXi servers, we will install VMware vSphere ESXi hypervisors and then we will configure them so our lab will have all it needs for our testing.